Hey guys, and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy gameplay video. This is episode 16 in our series so far. Now in the last episode, we infiltrated the goblin camp, and in the end, we end up finding a piece of the triptych. We took it back to the Undercroft, put it in, and Sebastian has an idea of where it leads to next. We also went to go help Poppy, as she had an idea of where we can return this dragon egg. After nearly getting flambéed, we end up returning the dragon egg back, and we got to have a close encounter with the dragon. We then went into Hogsmeade to get our second broom upgrade, and while we were there, we stumbled across a house elf called Penny, and she told us that her master, Cassandra Mason, was selling the shop. After some talking to, we end up buying the shop, and we went in and fixed it up. However, there was a catch. Cassandra was trying to play a con on us, and she tried to swindle us for some more money. However, we got Officer Singer involved, and after a Cruciatus curse, as well as some Imperial curses as well, we ended up subduing her, and then Officer Singer took her back to Azkaban. After that, we went to go see Penny, and tell her the good news, that we are now the proud owners of Vestas and Venom. So here we are today, guys. Now, we didn't get to do a lot in that episode. We did need to go see speak with Emilda Reyes, so let's just go to our quest log at the moment. Okay, so as you can see here, sky's the limit. We need to speak with Emilda Reyes. Let's track that. However, we do need to see Poppy too. She told us that we need to meet her in the Forbidden Forest and figure out the rescue plan. But also, Natty wants us to meet her outside of Hogsmeade. Now, we've got all those things to do. I think that's the order that we're going to do it in today, guys. So, let's go and speak with the Milda Reyes. The course looks rather deserted. I hope everything's alright. Ravenclaw, over here! Hello again, Imelda. This course is a bit far from the castle, isn't it? Obviously. Evidently too far for most of our classmates. Pathetic. They should be begging me to keep these trials alive, not running scared. I'm surprised our new fifth year showed up. I suppose I appreciate the effort. That's actually a thank you. I know I can be impatient, but I get frustrated by those who don't take things as seriously as I do. And in my experience, that's everyone. Anyway, don't let it go to your head. Right then, enough chatter. I'm confident I've posted a time you won't be able to beat. Okay, we'll see about that. We'll soon see how I fare, won't we? I'm ready. Get ready to lose, Ravenclaw. Two minutes and 42 Made seconds. It. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, this is faster now. Okay. Still don't like how the controls are on two joysticks though. Oh man. Brilliant flying, if I do say so myself. It's like we're halfway there. Oh. I'm getting sloppy now. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, I'm afraid he's gonna catch up to me, eh? Oh. Oh. 
Oh, did we get that? Excellent. Oh man. Man, too fast. All right, just two more rings. Brilliant flying. Last if I one. Do say so myself. <laughs> oh. Good. I've got this. We did it. We got it. Nice. Impressive work today, but don't get too comfortable. I'll be on your heels in no time. My family's not going to believe the news when I tell them. They're almost as competitive as I am. Almost. Okay, it's been it's fun. It's been fun competing against your records, Imelda. It has been fun. Glad you're here. Fifth year. Not bad for a Ravenclaw. You take okay. care of yourself. Ooh, nice. Got a trophy. Okay, so now to return back to Albie Weeks. I should Weeks. let Mr. Weeks know that this was his best upgrade yet. Hello again, Mr. Weeks. I set a new record at the South Course. Fantastic! Your broom performed well then. The best upgrade yet. It flew beautifully, incredibly nimble. But with the speeds it now reaches, I can feel the wind catching beneath the seat a bit, preventing it from reaching its full potential. Of course! Should have anticipated that! Exactly the kind of report I've come to expect from you. At last, I think I know what needs to be done for my final upgrade. Okay, very well. What will you do from here? What will you do after the final upgrade is complete? I aim to make spint witches the most sought after shop in Ogsmead. And I wouldn't mind getting back on a broom myself, just for the thrill of it. Couldn't be more pleased we made headway with the upgrades, proved the naysayers wrong, made all the hard work worth it. I shall look forward to speaking again. I'll be sure to send you an hour when I'm finished. Thank you again for your help. Okay, Couldn't nice. Couldn't have done this without you. Okay. Good for Mr. Weeks. Mr. Weeks and I do make a good team. <laughs> all right, so since we're Sometimes in Hogsmeade, let's go speak with Natty. I'm ready to do what's needed to take Harlow down. I know you have a plan. We must gather information from the friends of Mr. Bickle that Archie and Mrs. Bickle mentioned. Agabus Filbert, Otto Dibble, and Mr. and Mrs. Rib. All right. I suggest that you speak with each of them while I head to the Hogshead. I saw some Ashwinders heading there. And as my mother would never go near the Hogshead, she is less likely to learn of my activities than if I were to wander the village questioning its residents. Okay. Very well. I'll speak with them. See what I can learn. I knew I could rely on you. We need to know how they are being blackmailed by Rookwood and Harlow. Meet me here after you have spoken with them. No Hopefully worries. by the time you return, I will be able to move a bit more freely. Mrs. Rabe, I wondered if I might speak with you about Theophilus Harlow. I'm a friend of the Bickles and I'm trying to gather evidence against him. Poor Joanna and little Archie. And now Harlow has taken my darling Isco. What do you mean? Why? <laughs> I'm a security guard at Gringotts and my husband is a curse breaker for them. Harlow approached oh. me about helping him extort my colleagues into giving him treasures from the vaults. And you declined? Of course I declined. Repeatedly. I thought they'd given up until I came home one night and found my husband gone and a note affixed to my door with a knife. The note stated that I only had a few days to reconsider helping with some banking needs and that my husband would appreciate it if I acted quickly. But the help Harlow wants is help that I cannot give and my dearest Isco is paying the price. Oh man. Why wouldn't Harlow extort your husband? Isco's job is even more removed from the vaults than mine. He travels the world for the bank. He could do nothing for Harlow. I'm the one in the bank on a daily basis, which evidently makes me an enticing target for blackmail. Have you helped Harlow since your husband was taken? No. I'm worried sick about Isco, but he'd never want me to compromise my integrity. I also know that he's extremely clever. That said, I was hoping he would have escaped by now. 
It makes me concerned as to why he hasn't. Are you sure the note means that your husband was kidnapped? What else could it possibly mean? Besides, I came home to find that someone had trampled the daisies in our garden. It may sound silly, but those were Isco's pride and joy. He would never have let that happen. Thank you, Mrs. Rabe. Knowing the lengths that Harlow will go to is helpful, albeit more than disturbing. Mr. Bickle was trying to help us, but now he's gone. I don't know what to do. I shall do all I can to get evidence against Harlow, Mrs. Rabe. Very well. Here's the note I received. You must be careful as well. Please don't put yourself in danger. Some evidence worth mm. hanging on to. Thank you. Oh, I hope it's not too late. Now to find Mr. Bickle's other two friends. Okay. I was just about to say that. Time to find the other two friends. Otto Dibble works at Gladrags. I should check there. Yeah, but, 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 but please tell me you didn't take... Mr. Dibble, may I speak with you? It's about Theophilus Harlow. I have nothing to say about him. Uh, may I interest you in a stunning cravat today? Please, sir, I would like to help. I spoke to Mrs. Bickle. <laughs> you know the Bickles? Mm, all right, but we must be discreet. Can't have Mr. Hill hearing this. I know Mr. Hill. He was kind to me the day of the troll attack. Oh, he's a good man. But even he wouldn't understand about Harlow. It started a few weeks ago. I was distracted, reading a note, when you-know-who came into the shop. Voldemort? I had a note behind the counter and offered to help him. He stared at me for a moment, then asked me to check on an order he'd placed. I went into the storeroom to check on what turned out to be a non-existent order. When I returned, he was holding the note. What was in the note? It was a note from Rosie Hill, Mr. Hill's daughter. You see, we've been, well, secretly engaged these past six months. We haven't told Mr. Hill yet. I dare say he has higher hopes for her. Harlow advised me in no uncertain terms that my relationship with Rosie, not to mention my employment here, depended upon my cooperation. What did he uh, ask you to do? Blackmail. It all happened so quickly. In an instant, he took a very expensive scarf from the counter, pocketed it, and smiled. He said, your secret is safe as long as I can supply my lady friend with delightful items like this every so often. I've been able to cover for his request until now with some creative bookkeeping, but I can't keep it out for much longer. I'm terrified to say anything. I could never live without Rosie. Oh. Could you give me a bit more detail about the note that might help me to identify it should I come across it? It's on Rosie's special pink stationery. It has her monogram at the top, R.H. That's how Mr. Hill would know it was real. What have you been doing to keep the extortion a secret? Well, as I mentioned, creative bookkeeping. And I've also been trying to cover the costs with my own savings, but I'm running out of money. Of course, none of this bodes well for my efforts to improve my circumstances and to be worthy of Rosie. I met Mr. Hill the day of the troll attack. He was kind to me. Why don't you just tell him? He's a lovely man. But when it comes to Rosie, I fear he loses all perspective. He'd see this as a grave betrayal. I'd lose my job instantly, and Rosie as well. I get it. Thank you for telling me. I'm gathering evidence to take Harlow down. I would love nothing more than to see him rotting in Azkaban, but be careful. He's an awful man and incredibly dangerous. As for Rosie's letter, should you happen upon it, I have committed it to memory. You may destroy it immediately. Understood. Okay. Now hurry off before Mr. Hill returns. Where were they? We're on the right track. Now to find the last of Mr. Bickle's friends. Hello there. Excuse me, Mr. Filbert. I wondered if I might speak with you about your dealings with Theophilus Harlow. I hope to ease Mrs. Bickle's mind by gathering evidence against him. Oh, tragic what happened to Bickle. He wanted me to speak out against Harlow for an act of violence committed against me. But I feared Harlow's retaliation, and so I refused. 
If you had spoken out against him as Mr. Bickle asked, perhaps Harlow would be locked away by now. Perhaps. But... <sighs> perhaps I would have suffered a similar fate. You said that True. Harlow committed an act of violence against you. Could you tell me what happened? Before my extraordinary wife, Dulcibella, passed away, she had just completed a small book of poetry. As a surprise for her birthday, one she never had the chance to celebrate, I had the book beautifully bound and plated in gold. One day, Harlow came calling to punish me for having spoken out against the Neanderthals that comprise Brookwood's lot. Before I knew it, I'd been petrified, and Harlow was rifling through my home. He found the book of poetry with its exquisite gold plating. I watched helplessly, lying there in my entranceway as he walked away with the book, laughing as he went. I was shaken to my core. Still am, to be honest. I imagine you fear Harlow retaliating again. But do you mind if I share this information with Officer Singer? <sighs> I suppose I have no choice. This extortion can't go on forever. You can pass it on to anyone who may be willing to help. Harlow does not like people talking, as you already know. I've spoken with Mr. Bickle's friends. Now to find Natty. It's not like Natty to be late. She said she was going to the Hogshead. Perhaps I'll find her there. Natty must be around here somewhere. Natty's wand. She can cast oh. without it. She wanted me to find this. She's in trouble. Revelio will show me where she was taken. Oh. Nosy little students get what's coming to them. <laughs> what did you say? Rebellion. Natty must have been taken this way. Oh. I need to find her quickly. Footprints led to this room. There must be another way forward. Here. Must have been taken this way. I need to find her quickly. Revelio. I'd better be sure I'm not seen. Has your brain Oh wow. What's the girl this way? Everyone's coming for us. We ought to just kill her. Harlow says her friend will be arrogant enough. He wants them alive. Only a Hogwarts student would be arrogant enough to come in here alone. Just keep an eye out. Hmm. The fog lighted us a bit, Dunn. We have good spoils. Look at someone messing about. Hey, hey. I wonder if I get rid of us straight away. Oh, I can. Seems relatively straightforward. Love letter. Otto Dibble's love letter from Rosie. He wanted me to destroy this if I found it. How do I destroy it? Ah. 
That okay. team must be here somewhere. You found us. I knew you would realize I had left my one for you. Speak to Mr. Raven. He will tell you what you need to do. Over here. I need your help. Avelia. Okay. A little more. Mr. Rabe? Daisy told me you'd been abducted. You spoke with my wife. How is she? Worried about you. Are you alright? I am alright. Thank you for coming. These locks are cursed, and there's an anti-apparition jinx on the cells. Even Natty's skill with wandless magic cannot free us. I need you to find my wand. Mr. Rabe, I found your wand. Well done. I knew it was nearby. Now, you best stand back. One never knows how a curse will react to being broken. That's true. Revelia. Seemed a little too easy. Can I enter your cell? Anything in here? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Isco. My pleasure. And thank you, my friend. We owe our lives to your bravery. I may be too weak to disapparate with you both, but I can try. You go ahead. Find Officer Singer. We will get out of here on our own. Very well. But be careful. Thank you, my young friends. Be prepared for a fight. These Ashwinders must pay. Okay, time to verse these Ashwinders. Let's find Officer Singer and put an end to Harlow once and for all. I thought you said we were going to be in a fight. There's no one there. Oh, luckily she's right here. Natsai Onai. I should have known. And you, the troll dispatcher. Oh, thank goodness the two of you are safe. Isco Rabe told me a couple of students had rescued him. Should have known it was you two. Is Mr. Rabe all right? He is. I sent him home to his wife. Miss Onai, your mother will not be pleased to learn that you're still risking your safety pursuing these dangerous men. Actually, Officer Singer, Natty and I learned of several Hogsmeade residents who've had their lives threatened by the Ashwinders. In addition to abducting Mr. Rabe to blackmail his wife and Natty, Rookwood and Harlow have also extorted Agabus Filbert and Otto Dibble. Uh, I will look into all of that. As for the two of you, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you are taking great risk. Next time, please let the authorities handle the Ashwinders. Yes, officer. Do you have enough evidence to take down Harlow and the rest of Rookwood's lot? Well, it's certainly a good start. We shall see. But you can leave this to me now. Okay. That's I. You may wish to speak with your mother about this before I do. My mother will not like this. Thank you again for rescuing me. We shall speak soon. Mm, okay. I'm truly awed by what we've oh. accomplished. The final broom upgrade is better than even I expected. Stop by spin witches when you can. Okay. Luckily we're still in Hogsmeade, so we can do that right now. Oh, hello again. Couldn't have perfected the broom upgrades without your help. As always, I have a special prize for you. What are we looking for today? Oh, another broom. That item is of the highest quality. Didn't I purchase this already? Hogwarts House Broom. Oh. Broom upgrade. Oh, let's get this. I truly enjoyed working with you. Thank you for believing in me. Okay, so Hogwarts House Broom. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again. Okay. Okay, so gear, go to brooms now, Hogwood house broom, yeah I've got two of them, you can purchase more than one? I think this is a glitch, 
Oh, okay. Something's going on there. Okay, guys, now that's all done, let's go speak with Poppy. Is this where we're meeting the centaurs? Well, they don't exactly know we're coming, so it's less of a meeting and more of a surprise, I suppose. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Once we tell them about the Snidgets, they'll understand why we came and they'll want to help. I hope you're right. Perhaps they'll be able to tell that we're sincere. There's something about them that's so knowing. It's almost unnerving. I suppose they are known for having an air of omniscience. That's exactly the right word. I just... never mind. What is it? It's nothing, truly. I've... We've no secrets to hide. That's right. We'll simply be honest with them about what we're trying to do. They'll have to help us, won't they? Yes, of course. You're absolutely right. We'll meet with them, tell them about the Snidgets, and I'm sure to all be fu- What? Oh, they're here. What do you think you're doing here, humans? Please! We were hoping to speak with you. Ah! I suppose you'd like a tale for your friends of the time you spoke to a centaur and it spoke back. No! Never! We're here because... We need your help. Enough! You made a grave error in judgment in coming here, little witch. Leave them be, Alec. We do not harm the young. It is not our way. You forget your place, old fool. I'm the leader of this herd, and while you cling to our way, their kind continue to slaughter beasts like us without a care! From what I can see, they have slaughtered no one. They will leave here unharmed. Mark my words, Doran. If I ever see them again, it will be all three of your heads. Oh, wow. Foolish children. Do you know what happens to wizards who wander here? Now, follow me before Golden I... Golden Snidgets are still alive, and the poachers are after them. They know that the key to finding them lies in the moonlight, but they don't know what that means, yet. Please, help us find the Snidgets before the poachers do. Could it be? In the south, there is a cave within which lies what the poachers seek. A moonstone. Retrieve it and place it in the henge in the forest. I, on the other hand, must go speak with the herd. Find me after you have done this. Oh. Okay. I don't understand. So the moonlight mentioned in the journal doesn't refer to actual moonlight, but to a moonstone. What do moonstones have to do with Snidgets? And why was he so certain about where we could find one? Isn't moonstone common? Isn't moonstone all around us? Why retrieve one from a cave? Knowing centaurs, I suspect he's referring to a specific moonstone. We'll likely know it when we see it. Okay. I don't know. But I am inclined to believe him, what with his being a centaur and all. I am too. It is a shame how quickly he left. What was his name? Doran. That's what the leader of the herd called him. Well, if Doran knows something we don't, I'd rather act now and ask questions later. I can head to the library and start looking into the cave you mentioned. Okay. I'll let you know what I find. Okay guys, it's time to talk to Natsai again. See how she's doing after she got kidnapped from the Ashwinders. I still can't believe we escaped the Ashwinders. You may not realize it, but you are the talk of the school since you saved me that day. 
I wonder how everyone knows about it. I told my mother in the hope that she would be more forgiving of what I have been up to if it came from me. She likely told other professors and <laughs> news travels quickly. Unfortunately, she might, in fact, have been even less forgiving than I'd hoped. Her concern is warranted. I don't blame her for being concerned. We have been involved in some dangerous activities. As the Ashwinders were locking me up and threatening my life, it did occur to me that my mother may have been right. <laughs> has Officer Singer done anything with the evidence we provided? She has not. <sighs> Halo is as strong as ever. Someone needs to stop him, whether it is us or Officer Singer. If someone had stopped the monsters like him in Matabililand, my father would be alive today. What exactly happened to your father? It was a beautiful day. My mother had gone to tend to a neighbor who was ill, and so my father and I were galloping in the savannah. Galloping? Your father was also an Animagus, I take it? He could become the most majestic giraffe, and he would carry me on his back, my arms around his neck. We were on our way home when we surprised a group of bandits who had come from our village. One of them saw me just as he removed a scarf from his face. He shouted and then aimed his rifle. He didn't want you to identify him. Exactly. In an instant, my father bowed his neck to protect me and was hit. As he fell, my father changed back into his human form. When the bandits saw this, they turned and ran in fear. Magic terrified them, and then he was gone. <sighs> and it was all my fault. Your fault? How so? He died protecting me. If I had been capable of protecting myself, he would still be alive today. My mother and I tried to go on without him, but it became too much for us there. A few years later, we left to come to Scotland. Mm. I understand. Now, speaking of what happened before with Officer Singer, I think she might be on Rookwood's payroll. That's why she hasn't done anything about Harlow. We'll find out, I guess. What does your mother think about all of this? Well, as you saw, she worries a great deal. She is an excellent seer, but I think it bothers her to this day that she did not see my father's death coming. She misses him, as do I. So I believe on some level she understands my need to seek justice in a small way. But that does not mean that she likes it. Do you think your father would approve of the things we've been doing? Oh my, that is a good question. In theory, yes. Although he would worry as my mother does. But I think he, of all people, would understand my persistence. My father never shied away from a fight for good, no matter how ruthless the foe. And I think he would have enjoyed knowing that I had a compatriot like you. Do you think taking down the Ashwinders will avenge your father's death? No. Vengeance is not what drives me. My father would not want that. He, and my mother, raised me to believe that it is a privilege to be able to fight for those who cannot. I know there is risk involved, but I feel it is worth it. I am glad you seem to think so, too. I'm sorry, Natty. I can't imagine what you've been through. Your father sounds exceptional. He was. Truly extraordinary. And thank you for your kind words. We all have our burdens. My father had a saying about that. Yes, I remember. Rain does not fall on one roof alone. Exactly. Soon you and I will put an end to the Ashwinders, beginning with Harlow. And once he is gone, we will turn our attention to Rookwood. We are making progress, and we will succeed. Okay. Thank you again for saving me. You deserve all of the praise you have received. Okay, guys, and that ends another episode of Hogwarts Legacy. This was a short episode compared to our usual ones. However, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Until next time, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.